speaker this morning, which is none other than Papa is speaking. Nichols, give her a hand as she comes. Hallelujah. We want to turn the floor over to her because God has given her a word for righteousness. So put your records out and get ready to receive what the Lord has to say to righteous this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Do you mind if I go back a little? Hallelujah. God gave me this song. I'm not a song street, but I love to sing. I love to worship. I love to praise. God gave me this song, and it's just been echoing in my ear. Hallelujah. Since last week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cry loud. Spare not. Oh, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Cry loud, spare not. Oh, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sins. Cry loud, spare not. Oh, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sins. Hallelujah. 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 How many you know that we are in the season to cry loud and spare not and lift up our voice like a trumpet? Hallelujah. We are in a season. Hallelujah. To spare not. Hallelujah. We are in a season to cry loud. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we come to the throne of grace on today. Giving you the honor, the glory, and the praise that is due unto you, God. I thank you for this opportunity, God. But as I come to the throne of grace, I come humbly. I die to myself on today. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place like never before. Hide me behind the cross. I decrease as you increase in me. Hallelujah. I ask that you use my lips. Hallelujah. Speak through me. I give you permission to use my eyes. Hallelujah. Allow me to see beyond what these natural eyes can see. Father God, use my hands. Hallelujah. Anoint my hands, oh God. Mm. That when I lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Hallelujah, Lord. Anoint my feet, oh God. That my territory may be enlarged today. In the name of Jesus. Who have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we come against every demonic spirit. Every monitoring spirit. Every spirit of familiar, familiarity. Hallelujah. Spirit of divination. We cancel your assignment on today. Every plot and every plan, every scheme, hallelujah, that you set in place to interrupt, hallelujah. This service on today, we call it null and void, and we return it back to its sender in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. I'm giving honor to God, hallelujah, on today. I give honor to the shepherd of this house. I give honor to Apostle Wooten and Prophetess Wooten. I give honor, hallelujah, to this house, every leader in this house. I give honor to my bishop, hallelujah, Bishop Tony Owens and Pastor Signorette Owens, hallelujah, and my church family on today. Hallelujah, I thank God for being here on today. Hallelujah. I'm honored to be here today. And today I come as a messenger of God. And I come with backup. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, have your way on today. Angelic host, have your way on today. In the name of Jesus. If you will, open up your Bibles with me. And turn to Matthew 25. Hallelujah. Starting at the first verse, I will be reading from the message virgin on today. Hallelujah. When you have it, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. God's kingdom is like ten virgins who took oil, oil lamps and went, to, went out to greet the bridegroom. Five were silly and five were smart. The silly virgins took lamps but no extra oil. 
The smart virgins took jars of oil to feed their lamps. The bridegroom didn't show up when they expected him, and they all fell asleep. Verse 6 says, in the middle of the night, someone yelled out, he's here. The bridegroom is here. Go out and greet him. The ten virgins got up and got their lamps ready. The silly virgin said to the smart ones, our lamps are going out. Lend us some of your oil. They answered, they might not be enough to go around. Go buy your own. They did. But while they were out buying oil, the bridegroom arrived. And when everyone who was there to greet him had gone into the wedding feast, the doors were locked. Much later, the, oil, the other virgins, the silly ones, showed up and knocked on the door saying, Master, we're here. Let us in. He answered, do I know you? I don't think I know you. So stay alert. You have no idea when he might arrive. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I thank God for this message in the name of Jesus. I honestly didn't know that it was youth, young adult service Sunday. And God was ministering to me about the young adults. He was ministering to me about children anyway because I have a heart for children. God gave me a heart for children. A, a, a place to intercede on their behalf. When I pray for your children, I pray for them like they're mine. So I thank God that he allowed me to come on this day, hallelujah, to just minister, not just to the youth, but to the body of Christ on today. The Bible said God's kingdom is like ten young virgins who took oil lamps and went out to greet the bridegroom. Five were silly and five were smart. The King James Version says five was foolish and five were wise. I want to share with you today the difference between the foolish and um, the wise. The definition for foolish means void of understanding or sound judgment, weak in intellect, applied to general character, unwise, imprudent, acting without judgment or discretion in particular things, proceeding from folly or marked with folly, silly, vain, trifling. My God. The wise means proper, having knowledge, hence having the power of discerning and judging correctly, or discri dis discriminating between what is true and what is false, between what is fit and what is proper and what is improper. The Bible says that the silly virgins took lamps, but no extra oil. I forgot to share with y'all my, my subject. Forgive me. I got ahead of my My subject on today is I'm going for extra. I'm going for extra. And when you make up in your mind to go for extra, my God. The foolish virgins neglected to seek extra supply, which was the oil. The smart virgins took jars of oil to feed their lamps. The bridegroom didn't show up when they expected him, and they all fell asleep. Something hit my spirit when I read this in the message version. The bridegroom didn't show up when they expected him to. Some of us in the body of Christ are living like we know when Jesus is coming back. And we got so much time to do whatever we want. Hallelujah. I'm prepared. Not ready. We expected him to come back, but the Bible did tell me, I don't know about you, no man nor the day nor the hour. That's what it says. Expectations are wrong these days. Could it be because of their expectations, the foolish thought that they were going to have enough time that became comfortable? Oh, my God. All the virgins were outwardly the same. They were provided with the same lamps, prepared from, perform, to perform the same office, which was to keep your, your lamps lit. Come on. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus. <gasps> My God. The difference in the character is proved by the results. The foolish was unprepared. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 
Though everyone looks the same on the outside, you can never judge a book by its cover. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I made that mistake before, and God swiftly corrected it. You can never judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Prime example, when Samuel went to go anoint one of Jesse's sons uh -huh. to be king. Yes. Hallelujah. The first thing he did when he saw the elders, oh, he must be the one. He looked on the outward appearance. But God corrected him and said, man look at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. Yes. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Mm, God knows our heart, saints. He knows where we are in this walk, saints. Hallelujah. 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 So Samuel asked Jesse. He went through seven of his sons. None of them was the one. Samuel asked Jesse, do you have another? He said, yeah, I have David. He's out in the, in the field tending to the sheep. Hallelujah. David was doing the extra. David was doing what he was called to do at, in that season. Hallelujah. He was doing the extra. Everybody else was in the house. But David was working. He was doing the extra. So David came in all dirty, but the Bible says he still looked good. Hallelujah. But he was doing the extra. God said he is the one. He is the one to be anointed. Hallelujah. Not only was he a man after God's own um, heart, but if you continue to read the word, it says, because he will fulfill my will. Amen. Are we in his will today, saints? Are we doing what we're called to do? Are we working? Jesus. I'm going the extra. Verse 6 says, in the middle of the night, someone yelled out, he's here. The bridegroom is here. Go out and greet him. They all got up and went when the cry was made. They all got up when the cry was made. Where are the watchmen in this season? Mm. I went over to Ezekiel 33, 1 through 9. God's message came to me. Son of man, speak to your people. Tell them if I bring war on this land and the people take one of their citizens and make him their watchman, and if the watchman sees war coming and blows the trumpet, warning the people, then if anyone hears the sound of the trumpet and ignores it and war comes and takes him off, it is his own fault. He heard the alarm. He ignored it. It's his own fault. If he had listened, he would have saved his life. But if the watchman sees the war come, coming and doesn't blow the trumpet, warning the people and war comes and takes anyone off, I hold the watchman responsible for the bloodshed of any unwarned sinner. My God. Where are the watchmen in this season? Where are the watchmen? You son of man. You son of man are the watchmen. I've made you a watchman for Israel. The minute you hear a message from me, warn them. If I say to the wicked, wicked man, wicked woman, you're on the fast track to death. <coughs> Excuse me. And you don't speak up and warn the wicked to change their ways. <coughs> the wicked will die unwarned in their sin and I hold you responsible for their bloodshed <coughs> excuse me my allergies but to God be the glory this must come out I have to share with you all I've, I've been back in Orlando for three, I think this is the third month mm -hmm. of this year. I stepped, I touched down in Orlando in January, December 31st. When I touched down in Orlando, I touched down, I, I, I got COVID. Then after COVID came bronchitis. Then after bronchitis came sciatic nerve. And then after sciatic nerve, then my, heart, my blood pressure rose to the highest. Then after my blood pressure rose to the highest, I 
receive laryngitis because of my uh, allergies. So my body's been attacked because I'm on assignment. Uh -huh. But just because my body's been attacked, it doesn't stop the assignment. I have to keep going, I have to keep praying, and I have to keep ministering. I must be about my father's business. All right, then. But if you want the wicked to change their ways and they don't do it, they'll die in their sins, well, well worn, at, at least you will have saved your own life. I want to share a dream, hallelujah, that tied into this this these verses from Ezekiel. About two weeks ago, I had a dream. I was looking over the city. And while I was looking over the city, I saw a storm coming. And in front of the storm stood a man. And while I was watching, my there was an urgency within me to hurry up and get on the wall. <laughs> Excuse me. So I Hurry up and got on the wall and I began to pray. And then I got up and I saw the storm was still coming. So I got down from the wall because the storm was headed towards the city gates. So I stood between the city gates and the storm. And while I was standing there, the man let me know that I could, he controlled the storm. So when he moved, the storm moved. When he stood still, the storm stood still. He also let me know that he could move and the storm stay still. So I proceeded to lay prostrate between the storm and the city gates. So when I got up from praying, the storm was gone. And I saw people on the wall praying with their hands lifted up to God. But when I woke up from the dream, I heard Texas, Texas, Texas. Texas. When God gives me dreams like that, I share with two or three witnesses because I don't watch the news. It's my choice. I don't like the news and what I just don't watch it. I have a news app on my phone and if something pops up, it pops up to alert me but I don't sit and watch the news. I haven't watched the news in years. So I shared this dream with my big sister in Christ and I shared it with another big sister in Christ because when it comes to pass, I need witnesses. So Sunday, last Sunday in service, I heard the Lord say, where are the watchmen? Where are the intercessors? Where are the ones that sit on the, stand in the gap and make up the hedges? So Monday, it was Tuesday, I received a phone call saying, sis, did you hear about Texas? I was like, no, I don't watch the news. And she sent me an app on what happened in Texas. I believe it was like 25 tornadoes went through Texas. My God. Where are the intercessors? Where are the watchmen? Where are the ones who make up the hedges and stand in the gap? And where are the ones who said, when God said, <coughs> Who can I send? And they raised their hand and said, God, I go. Send me. But you ain't moved. You ain't do what he told you to do. You're doing what you're called to. You're doing what you want to do and not what God called to do. So I'm I'm asking the intercessors to get back in your rightful place. God is calling you. Watch us get back in your rightful place. God is calling you. Hallelujah. The ones who are supposed to be standing in the gap and making up the hedges, get back in your rightful place. God is calling you. Amen. Amen. The silly virgin said to the smart ones, our lamps are going out. Lend us some of your oil, which tells me that the foolish didn't, did he just did enough. They just did enough. Just enough. Did just enough to keep it lit. But they, not to keep it lit, but just to light it, but not to keep it lit. To keep the fire burning. They just did enough. Just enough. Hallelujah. They refused to do the extra. The answer, they answered, the wise, there might not be enough to go around. Go by your own. Sis, bruh, 
I'm not sharing with you what I got. I work too hard for this. My God. Woo. Psalms 49 and 7 says, No man can possibly redeem his brother or pay his ransom to God. I can't save you. So why would I give you what God's given me? Why would I give you that what I worked for? Why would I give you what I told for? Why would I give you what I put my push my plate aside for? This cost me something, and guess what? It's too expensive. I'm sorry. I share some. I share my food. I let you buy my shoes. I will even let you drive my car. But you, not the oil. Hallelujah. To God be the glory, not the oil. They knew the bridegroom was coming, but they refused to prepare for his coming. Just like the foolish, we know that the soon coming king will return, but some refuse to go the extra. You don't have time to pray. You don't have time to read. You don't have time to spend with the Father. You have every excuse in the world to go the extra. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Bible said while they were out buying oil, the bridegroom arrived. Yes. While you out doing what you want to do, the king is coming. Yes. Jesus, he's on his way. And while you still have breath in your body, you should be about your father's yes. business. Yes. <coughs> Listen. Don't let the Lord come and catch you unprepared. The silly virgins were prepared. No were they in the right place. Hallelujah. When everyone who was there to greet him had gone into the wedding feast, the door was locked. Will you be the one in the right place? Or will you be in the wrong place? Revelation 22 and 12 says, And behold, I come quick, quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according to his work shall be. Again, are you working? Are you doing what you're called to do? Amen. To give to every man according to his work shall be. The wives was ready. They took extra oil. They were ready for the coming of the bridegroom. And they went into the feast. When you decide to go the extra, things begin to change. When you decide to go the extra, connections begin to change. When you go the extra, hallelujah, you won't look back anymore. When you decide to go the extra, your mind is made up, hallelujah, when you decide to go the extra. You don't mind dying to yourself. You don't mind, hallelujah, dying you don't mind taking up your cross to follow Christ. You don't mind selling out. Hallelujah. When you decide to go the extra, your prayer life change, hallelujah, begins to go stronger and deeper in God. When you go the extra, hallelujah, you're studying the word more. You're studying the word more to show yourself approved. Hallelujah. When you go the extra, Ruth went the extra, hallelujah, when she decided to leave all and follow Naomi in the natural and Christ in the spirit. Hallelujah. I will you go the natural. Esther did the extra, hallelujah, when she made up her mind that she was going to, hallelujah, go before the king to save her people. She did the extra. Will you do the the extra today. Yes. Hannah did the extra when yes. she went up to the temple. Hallelujah. And sought God for a man child. Mm. Will you do the extra? Mm. Now this may be a hard one for some people. Mm. Jacob did the extra when you wrestled with the man. Hallelujah. Mm. To the breaking of day. Because yes. mm -hmm. he refused to let him go until he blessed him. Mm. Yes. Hallelujah. Will you do the extra? Will you do the extra? Will you do the extra? Jesus. Jesus. It's time to do the extra. It's time to do the extra. Abraham did the extra when he left. Hallelujah. That which was familiar. Hallelujah. To follow God. So many men and women in the Bible did the extra. 
Hallelujah. They were our example. Hallelujah. To follow them. Samson did, Samson did the extra. Hallelujah, Lord, in the name of Jesus when he laid down his life <laughs> to die. Are you willing to lay down your life today? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you willing to lay down your life today? Hallelujah. The five wives did the extra. Doing the extra means sacrifice. Getting the extra means pressing forward. Forgetting that which is behind. Getting the extra means walking in obedience. When you move when God says move, when you stand when God says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, are you willing to get up when he says pray? Jesus. When you release that which God told you to release, hallelujah, and you've been still holding on to it. I remember watching this video. I don't know how long it's been of this little baby. I mean this baby. Screaming and hollering. Crying because he was pulling his hair. Anybody ever seen that video? He literally was pulling his own hair, a baby. He looked like he was a couple weeks old. Pulling his own hair. And the parents tried so hard to ungrip his hand. But he was just hollering and screaming. Some of us is just like that baby. God literally showed me a hand. A fist closed tight. We just like that baby. Inflicting our own self with pain because we're walking in disobedience. Mm. Hallelujah. The only difference is he was a baby. Yeah. We ain't babies no more, saints. Yeah. We've been in this way a long time. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Mm. My God. Yeah. Jesus. It's time to let it go. Whatever that it is, mm. God said, let it go. Because you're walking in disobedience. If he told you to let go of something and you're still holding on, you're walking in disobedience. Do you understand some of you? That's why some of you feel uncomfortable. Some things aren't working out the way you want them to because you're walking in disobedience. Let it go. Let it go. Verse 11 says, much later, the, the other versions, the, the silly ones, Showed up and knocked on the door. Say, Master, we're here. Let us in. Mm -hmm. Jesus is giving us a parable on what can happen if you don't go the extra. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us in Matthew 7 and 21, Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, are you doing the will of the Father or are you doing your own will? Are you doing the will of the Father or are you doing your own will? Are you doing the will of the Father or are you doing your own will? I remember I some, some of you all may know that I've been wanting to move out of Florida for some time. I was, it was seven years ago. Maybe eight. I prayed and asked God <clears throat> I said, after my divorce, after my three daughters graduate high school, I want to do something for me, God. I want to experience something that I've never experienced before. I want to go somewhere I've never been before. That was my desire. So I guess what? I chose Texas. I said, Texas. Some of you know. I kept saying, I'm moving to Texas. I'm moving to Texas. I was praying about that thing. I'm moving to Texas. For four years, I prayed that prayer. The fifth year, something happened. I said, God, I've been praying this prayer for so long. I never asked you, what is your will? What is your will? Mm -hmm. He allowed me to move, but it wasn't to Texas. It was to Tennessee. <laughs> it was to God be the glory. To God be the glory. People would ask, did you know when you went to Tennessee? No. You got family and friends? No. I wanted to experience something different, and God allowed me to do that, and I'm grateful because it's something that would, has changed my life forever. And I will share that at another time, but to God be the glory. The moral of that story was because I wanted to be in his will. I prayed four years my way. But something shifts. 
God, what is your will? What is your will? Because he could have said, I want you to go nowhere. Hallelujah. And when he moved, he moved swiftly. So God, I thank you. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove that what is that good, hallelujah, and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 12 says, he answered, do I know you? I don't think I know you. Another verse says, he answered, verily I say unto you, I know you not. God says, of Abraham I know, I know him. Yes. And of Moses, uh -huh. I know thee by name. Uh -huh. To be known of God is a higher blessing uh -huh. to know God. Uh -huh. To be known of God is a higher blessing to know God. Uh -huh. I don't know about you, saints, but I want God to know me. Amen. Jesus. Yeah, he know me, but I want him to know me. That means in order for him to know me, I got to spend time with him. Jesus. This relationship is not one-sided. She's any relationship is two-sided. To my God. My God. Verse 13 says, so stay alert. You have no idea when he might arrive. Another verse that says, therefore be on alert, be prepared and ready. For you do not know the day nor the hour the Son of Man will come. First Thessalonians 5 and 6 says, therefore let us not sleep or do other as others but let us watch and be sober. It is a time to wake up. It's time to wake up, saints. We're living in the last days. Just take a look around and see what's happening in the world. Yes, we can do this. Yes, we can go there. Yes, we can go here. Yes, we can buy this. Yes, we can buy that. But what about our spiritual walk? What about our relationship with Christ? Amen. What about the things that he's called us to do? Amen. And because I'm an innocent and I love God, and I love God's people, hallelujah, I love God's children. It's something about the children. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, because I got three, and I love them. But it's something about the children that God has drawn me to where I pray and intercede. When I pray for my children, God gives me the names of other people's children. Hallelujah. And I'm grateful because I want to see everyone prosper. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And be in good health even as their soul prosper. Yeah. Hallelujah. I heard the Lord say, no one wants to go deep sea diving. Mm -hmm. You just want to stay in the shallow water where you think it's safe. I'm here to tell you as long as you stay in the shallow water, you're not safe. Why? Because you're swimming in disobedience. God is telling you to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And you refuse to move because of fear. And you know the scripture. You know that you're, you're able to cast out fear. You know he hasn't given you the spirit of fear. So we come up with these excuses. But God has a scripture for every excuse. God has a scripture for every excuse. So you can't say you don't know. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. This is the foolish thinking some of us have when we think that if we stay in the uh, shallow water, we're safe, but you're not. And I'm thinking about how when um, Job's wife, when he was going through everything that he went through, and hallelujah, and he asked Job's wife, when she said, still hold fast to your integrity, why don't you just curse God and die? Mm -hmm. Job looked at his wife and said, you, you can this was foolish. Who are you hanging with this season? <laughs> My God. Who 
are you hanging with this season? Are you hanging with complainers, gossipers, backbiters, liars, hallelujah, people who have made things and people, their idols, they little G-O-D. Check your surroundings in this season. I heard the Lord say, so many of y'all so thirsty for relationship. I'm being real. I'm here as a message of God. I'm going to release whatever he gives me to say. Hallelujah. I fear no faces. Hallelujah. Because I have backup. To God be the glory. I got backup. Either romance or friendship that you're doing things your way and not his. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Jesus is coming again as the bridegroom of his church, which is his bride. We need to be waiting and watching. We need to be ready for his return. The foolish virgin can be compared to the people who know about Jesus, who go to church, but they are not serious about their relationship. They are religious people. And they still are in control of their own lives. Jesus, you can come in. I give you this part. I give you this part of the house. But I got this part. I give you the upstairs. I'll take the downstairs. But you refuse to give him the whole house. <laughs> the house that he gave. The house that he built. We talking about this house. We ain't talking about the natural house. We talking about this house. Hallelujah. And they bear no Roots. Wow. Hallelujah. To show that they are a Christian. Mm. The wise version can be compared to people who live for the Lord Jesus, who spend time in prayer and Bible study, who are obedient and follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit in their lives. They are dead to themselves. They have taken up their cross. They have made up their minds to follow Christ. They have totally sold out. Mm -hmm. They will be ready when Jesus comes. If you really study this, this uh, about the virgins, it's about the church. Okay. Half of y'all wise and half of y'all foolish. I'm included. Half of us is wise and half of us is foolish. Well, that mean, does that mean 50% of us will make it in? Not God. Mm -hmm. Where virgins are you today? What version are you today? Mm -hmm. mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this word. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God wants to take us to the next level in him. Yeah. But we must be about our Father's business. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was getting ready to move back and I, and I was going from walking and I was telling myself that each week I would tell myself, I was walking only three miles a day. I need to get back and working out, but to God be the glory. I was walking three miles a day, and I would tell myself each week, I'm going to go an extra mile next week. I'll go an extra mile next week. Then one day the Holy Spirit said, go the extra mile. Mm -hmm. That day I went the extra mile. My response was, yes, Lord. So I began to go the extra mile, and I began on that mile, and I began to give the Lord praise. I began to just say thank you, because there was a reason behind him telling me to go the extra mile. I didn't know what, and I didn't know why. I just wanted to tell the Lord, thank you. So as I began to go the extra mile, I began to feel the pain, the, the discomfort. My body was comfortable with the three miles. But when I started the fourth mile, I began to feel the discomfort and the pain of that mile. Hallelujah. Next level. When you go on next level, you're going to begin to feel the discomfort and the pain of that next level. Hallelujah. It's time for some of us to go the extra mile. It's time to get uncomfortable and be about our father's business. We're all, hallelujah, having an assignment. Your assignment may not be the same as mine, but guess what? We all have one. Let's go the extra mile. Because I'm not sharing my oil with you. Let's go the extra mile. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. 
Hallelujah. So God wants to push you into the next level. Hallelujah, Lord. But he's not going to force you into the next level. Hallelujah. So I thank God for this message. I pray that it is a blessing to so many of you. Hallelujah. I thank God for just allowing me to minister this word on today. In the name of Jesus. So Father, we pray for the body of Christ. We pray first and foremost for those who may not know Christ yes. as his personal Lord and Savior. Yes. So I'm going to ask everyone just to stand with me, please. Yes. Hallelujah. As we get ready to close out. Yes. Hallelujah. This service. And I'm going to ask that you bow your heads. Father God, we thank and praise you for your grace and your mercy on today. Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer. And I ask anyone who does not know Lord and Jesus, the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I ask that you... Repeat after me, confessing that you are, hallelujah, a sinner, and that you cannot save yourself, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus is your son, hallelujah, and that he died on the cross so that I might be forgiven and have eternal life and kingdom of heaven. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead, and I ask you right now to come into my life and be my personal Lord and Savior. I repent of my sin. And will worship you all the days of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me be obedient in every aspect of your my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, we pray, hallelujah, Lord, as this message went forth on today, that it did not fall, hallelujah, on holy, that it fell on good ground in the mighty name of Jesus, that holy, our hearts were open to receive that what the Spirit has to say on today in the name of Jesus, that you have encouraged, hallelujah, that they are strengthened and that they are healed, hallelujah, to go the extra mile, to do what you've called them to do, to walk in obedience, oh God, in this season, hallelujah, for you have called them for such a time as this, and we pray for every intercessor, every watchman, and everyone that is supposed to be standing in the gap and making up the hedges that they return to their rightful positions in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we decree and declare that no weapon formed against your people will prosper. Every time that rise up against them in judgment, thou shalt condemn in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree it to be so. We decree victory. Hallelujah. We know that your word will not return unto you void in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Give the Lord a hand for her. Yes. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. A right now word. A right now word for the house. Hallelujah. I'm going the extra mile. Are you willing to go the extra mile this morning? She gave us some examples in the word of those that went the extra mile. She gave us some examples for us to follow of those that went the extra mile. And as she was preaching this word and teaching us this word about going the extra mile, uh, Prophetess Vicky, I thought about Paul. <laughs> I thought about Paul in the word. Paul said three times I was beaten. He says I was stoned, I was shipwrecked, <laughs> but he was willing to go all the way. See, when we go all the way, hey, gosh, hey, no, 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 when you decide to go all the way, the enemy is coming. You know how we used to say he coming with everything, including the kitchen sink? He's coming, but we got to prepare our hearts. God has told us to go. Remember the story in the word when he told them to go to the other side yeah. and they got in the boat and the storm came. Yeah. The storms are going to come. Trouble is going to come. Yeah. But we got to obey God. Yeah. And we got all in righteous yeah. to go to that extra mile. Yeah. So I don't know about you all, but I know you heard from God. Because yeah. God was dealing with me last week about this same thing. Yeah. You got some place to go. And you got to get in position to get to where I need you to go. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I know she heard from God. I don't know about you, yeah. but I received what God is saying. Yeah. This morning, she didn't do anything but bring confirmation to me. Yeah. I don't know about you, but she brought confirmation to me. Yeah. What God has already spoke to me this week yeah. on Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. So I know what I got to do. Yeah. Do you know what you have to do? Yeah. So I'm challenging you this morning. Because, see, this is a personal thing. Because when you stand before God, you can't blame me. Lord, you know, Prophetess Ruth, she was my...
my pastor. And she didn't do this. And she didn't do that. And see, when, when we get to hurt this stuff, we like to blame folks. But when we stand before God, we can't blame nobody. We're standing for ourselves. So I challenge you this morning. God is calling you to go the extra mile. So you go the extra mile. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God this morning in this place for this word. And those of you that are watching us by Facebook, we thank you for joining us. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for joining us. And we ask that you come back on next week and visit us again. Yes. And I pray that you have a Jesus-filled day. Amen. I pray that the rest of your week is blessed. Amen. And I pray that you take this word and you challenge your oneself. Because the word of God tells us to examine ourselves. Yes. See, it's easy to point fingers. Yes. But it's not easy to examine yourself. So let's take this word and let's examine ourselves on this week. On this week. This is springtime. And you know springtime, new flowers come up, new stuff. Us ladies, we get in the house and we clean and we put the old, put the fall pillows away and put out the spring pillows and the, hang up the spring curtains. So do something for yourself this spring. <laughs> go the extra mile. Examine your oneself and go the extra mile. Once again, we thank you for joining us. We thank you for joining us. And we pray that God will continually to bless you in Jesus' name.